The 15 years that we had with Alfred were far too short, but we know that Alfred is now in heaven with God. My parents and I will always love him dearly, and his death will leave a void in our hearts. There are, st there are still a lot of questions about what happened, but it appears Alfred Wong was a bystander caught in the crossfire between drug gangs. The Vancouver police chief says it is the worst he's seen in 10 years. I was at that news conference where we learned more about the investigation and the 15-year-old victim. Although he was taken from us much, much too soon, he lived his 15 years to their fullest extent. It was a somber news conference as the Wong's family pastor and Alfred's brother spoke about their loss. On behalf of my family, I'd like to thank everyone for giving us time and privacy to grieve for Alfred's passing. We're all still in shock that something like this could have happened to us. Wong's parents released a statement describing him as a gentle child, and they added, no words can express how much we'll miss him. Just nine days ago, he was struck by a stray bullet as his family drove down this busy Vancouver street, just on their way home from dinner. Police say someone shot and killed this man, Kevin Whiteside, who had connections to criminal drug gangs. Whiteside had a gun. The police chief says he knows whose bullet struck Alfred Wong, but won't say. What the chief will say is about 100 officers have worked on this case, speaking to witnesses, scrutinizing surveillance and dash cam video. But it hasn't been enough. This past weekend, the department set up a command post at the crime scene, hoping more witnesses would come forward. But they still haven't identified a suspect. Given all these circumstances here, and given that a 15-year-old boy was an innocent victim here, is this a particularly frustrating case for you? I think it's frustrating for everybody that's involved in this investigation because it's very rare that we see an innocent person killed, or particularly you know a, a young person right in the early stages of their life. So it's, uh, it's heartbreaking to see this, uh, just tragic for everybody involved. Heartbreaking, but for many here, unsettling as well. The chief insists Vancouver remains a safe city, but concedes it's a city dealing with a surge of gun violence, shootings among criminal organizations involved in the drug trade. We've got several groups that are at odds with one another, and they're going out killing each other. To give you a sense of how bad the violence has been, in the past week and a half alone, that is, since Wong was killed, there have been nearly a half dozen shootings in and around Metro Vancouver. This cycle that we're going through right now is significant. Uh, we haven't seen gang violence like this in probably the last 10 years. That year, 2009, is being remembered as one of the deadliest in Metro Vancouver's history. Violent conflict among drug gangs spilled onto the street. In just the first two months of the year, police responded to more than 30 shootings. Well, let's get serious. There is a gang war and it's brutal. Across the Lower Mainland, the body count climbed as people were killed in their homes, in their cars, and on busy streets and in shopping centers. In part, based on the rivalry between the United Nations gang and the Red Scorpions, controlled by the infamous Bacon Brothers. What we have seen are new rules of engagement for the gangsters. They're now shooting each other when they don't have to. There were 56 murders in the region that year, Vancouver earning an international reputation as a playground for gangsters and murder city. In terms of our international reputation, uh, I. Uh, I think it's a problem, and uh, we, need to, we need to bear down and, uh, and focus on, uh, on dealing with it urgently.